Hey guys, this is my longer video to help you out with digestion. Specifically, we're going to look at the digestion of starch. So, starch is obviously a polysaccharide. So, it's a polymer made out of many alpha glucose monomers. It's bigger than this in reality, but hey, <laughs> can't draw it fully. But yeah, you'll remember as well that you've got the helical amylose, you've got the branched amylopectin. But yeah, it's a polysaccharide made from many alpha glucose monomers. Now, the digestion of starch starts in the mouth. Obviously, in the mouth, we have what we'd call mechanical digestion. So we are chewing our food, we're moving it around, we're mixing it with saliva, and that's going to start to break the kind of large chunks of food into smaller chunks of food. And it's going to help to increase the surface area for enzyme digestion. So in the mouth, and this is what's more important for A-level, we also have chemical digestion using enzymes because our salivary glands produce saliva and saliva contains amylase. So we've got our first enzyme involved in starch digestion. Now amylase hydrolyzes or digests starch into maltose. Okay, so here for example, if I show the hydrolysis of that glycosidic bond, now we've got maltose because we've got two alpha glucose monomers joined together with a glycosidic bond. So this would be maltose. So again, I could do another hydrolysis of a glycosidic bond here, and I'm hydrolyzing the big polysaccharide starch into disaccharides called maltose. Now, obviously, then we're going to swallow. It's going to go down our esophagus. It's going to go into our stomach. There is no digestion of starch in the stomach because, well, think about it. The stomach contains really strong hydrochloric acid, which is going to denature any of those amylase enzymes. There's no enzymes that can digest starch in the stomach. But after it's been to the stomach, the maltose and any remaining starch that hasn't yet been digested is going to go into the small intestine. Okay, now as it goes into the small intestine, the pancreas releases enzymes into the small intestine. And again, it's amylase. This time we could call it pancreatic amylase. The food doesn't go into the pancreas, just to be clear. The pancreas is releasing the pancreatic amylase into the small intestine, so further digestion of starch can occur. Again, this is amylase, so again, it's hydrolyzing or digesting any remaining starch into maltose. So we've still only got the disaccharide maltose by this point, but... As that maltose continues along the small intestine, it's going to reach the third and final part of the small intestine, which is called the ileum. Okay, the ileum is the third and final part of the small intestine. And what's important in here is the epithelial cells that line the ileum contain membrane-bound maltase. When I say membrane bound, what I mean by that is the epithelial cells in their cell surface membrane, which is highly folded into microvilli to increase the surface area, but in that cell surface membrane, bound within that membrane, there are maltase enzymes. So they're not free within the ileum, but they are attached to the cell surface membranes of those epithelial cells. And obviously this enzyme maltase hydrolyzes maltose into alpha glucose. 
So if I show you on here, we'd hydrolyze this glycosidic bond, we'd hydrolyze this glycosidic bond, and we'd have the monomer or the monosaccharide alpha glucose, which is then small enough and it's soluble, it can be absorbed through the wall of our small intestine into our bloodstream using that co-transport mechanism that we've talked about before. The whole point of this is to take large insoluble molecules of starch and digest or hydrolyze them into small soluble alpha glucose so it can be absorbed into our blood and delivered to all of our body cells. Make yourself a little flow diagram. That's how I would do this. I'd talk about the mouth, maltose produced by the salivary glands, well, it's in the saliva, sorry, that's produced by the salivary glands. Then I talk about the pancreas, more amylase. Then I talk about the ileum, membrane bound maltase to get us all the way from starch to alpha glucose. It's not as simple as it was at GCSE, is it? But I hope this video has helped you to understand the process.